Fusion 360. There's a question, <laughs> what is Fusion 360? We can get this wrapped up in a minute and be out in time for the pubs. Yeah, it's a 3D card modeler. No, it's not, it's not. It, well, it is, it's not quite that simple. Right, well, I tell you what, we'll start with how Autodesk define Fusion 360 and what they say it is. Right, well, Autodesk state that Fusion 360 is a cloud-based CAD, CAM, and CAE tool for collaborative product development, combining organic modeling workflows with precise solid modeling to create manufacturable designs. Uh, but most people just ask, is it free though? <laughs> yes. All right, yes, yes and no. So there is a free version of Fusion 360 and a paid version as well as additional paid extensions to Fusion 360, which are kind of like DLC packs to kind of reference how things are these days. But Autodesk are trying their best to correct course the whole free card vibe that Fusion's had going on for the longest time. When we started Fusion 360, it was not our intention to make free CAD or hobby CAD. But their Fusion 360 for personal and hobby use license, which is the free one, kind of is and is always going to be, in my opinion, what it's best known for, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? It's not really done it much harm. So with that, the zero cost entry point Fusion 360 gets you a three-year renewable license with limited features on the promise that you don't use it for commercial purposes. Uh, that free license, it may be limited, mate, but it's still kind of powerful. It gets you pretty much all of the parametric design and 3D modeling tools, limited but still possible cam and cutting capabilities, as well as single sheet drawings, local rendering, basic ele electronics design, and a ton more stuff that I'll cover some of that, some of it in this video, mate. It's going to be a week long. Uh, for select others, though, there's the unrestricted Fusion 360, which has numerous entry points. Right, so if you've got an eligible startup business under three years old, grossing less than hundred thousand US dollars revenue, then you can apply for the one-year renewable startup license, mate, which you can use for free whilst you're still eligible for that. Qualifying students, educators, and institutions can apply for the free educational license. Alternatively, well, everyone else, maybe you can just pay, I say just, but you can pay $495 a year or less if it's on discount. The Autodesk actually run regular discounts on Fusion 360 and it's on discount right now, mate. Links in the description if you want to snag a decent deal on Fusion 360. So to get going with Fusion 360, you, what you do is you create an Autodesk account, you download the installer, Install the local desktop client, which can be Windows or Mac based. You log in, you fire it up, and you get cracking, mate. You'll then be working on a local desktop client application, but any data that you create is saved into the Autodesk Cloud service. That's kind of Fusion 360's thing. Fusion 360 doesn't prompt you to save your files with file extensions into folders on your local computer like your other applications that you're probably used to. Your designs are instead simply named something and then saved into an online project data panel inside of Fusion 360. Now, if you're planning on, I don't know, for example, taking a flight and you want to work on a design without internet access, there is an offline mode within Fusion 360 where it'll temporarily and locally cache something that you've been working on in the cloud onto your local laptop. But that offline mode isn't supposed to be a permanent working solution or a workaround to Fusion 360 being a cloud application. But what does Fusion 360 do generally? What, what is it? Well, mate, it's right. Okay. It's a canny bit, right? Bearing in mind, Fusion 360 is strictly pitched into the manufacturing and product design markets. It does have a fairly comprehensive set of well, flexible 3D tools, including direct modeling, surface, parametric, mesh, and freeform modeling tools. It doesn't light a candle to its bigger and more matured bigger brother Autodesk Inventor, but that's had significantly longer active development behind it. Inventor's got more in the way of engineering assistance, tool sets, engineering calculators, automation, that kind of thing. But Fusion 360, it's still exceptionally capable in its own right. Now, of course, that does depend on who you are, right? What you're trying to do and what you're used to, if you're used to anything at all. It depends on what you come from. It depends on what you've used before as to whether you feel it's a comprehensive tool set. Needless to say, mate, there's very few product design concepts that won't be achievable using the available modeling techniques on offer in Fusion 360. Now, products can be designed using a hierarchical tiered structure layout in Fusion 360, as in individual piece parts are created and then grouped together to form product assemblies. 
then detailed on the technical 2D drawings. If you want to go down the drawings route, you don't have to. A lot of people are moving away from drawings. Now it supports basic sheet metal design as well with flat pattern layouts. The Autodesk Eagle PCB designer acquisition was ultimately integrated in a Fusion 360 as well, which brings electronics and printed circuit board design with push button spice simulation as well. Speaking of simulation though, designers generally need to know if their ideas might fail, fall apart, smash to pieces if much force is applied to a certain part, uh, what might happen under excessive vibration or unwanted resonance, uh, where's the heat from a certain component being emitted out and into. Well, mate, you're not going to be figuring much out for yourself in Fusion 360 because it brings a huge arsenal of both local and cloud-based multi-threaded simulation solvers for a massive variety of digital simulations. And all of this, mate, is delivered within what Autodesk call their unified end-to-end -end product development platform. Basically, it means that Autodesk have homogenized a wide variety of complementary yet very different technologies over the years and brought them all together inside of Fusion 360, whilst keeping all the user interfaces and technologies seamless with consistent and fluid user experience across each feature. Essentially, what that means is they've taken a ton of different stuff that looked differently at one point, all worked differently, and made it all work the same and look the same within the same thing, used into Fusion uh, well, 360. And the good times don't end there, mate. Fusion 360 has received some of Autodesk's most progressive advanced technology ever developed. Like take Project Dreamcatcher, for example, which was later renamed to Generative Design, or Jerry as I like to call him. This arguable witchcraft is actual AI driven design algorithms, which basically does your work for you. But then good guy Jerry throws you a solid and actually gives you dozens of ideas on how your designs could work, but each being something that you as a human, you could never have designed yourself. With each iteration of a design conforming to like material stress limits, conventional and obtainable manufacturing techniques, and even if you want to, giving you cost estimates for what each one would cost to make. Now to hire Gerald, you will need the generative design extension or the DLC pack, or you can pay for it. I think using flex tokens, what was cloud credits for each pass. Uh, but needless to say, Autodesk are rather proud of Gerald and that technology. But to many, Fusion 360 is known for being a key stage helper in their additive or subtractive manufacturing workflow, primarily 3D printing on knocking out NC code for machining. And this, I guess it's, it's testament to just how versatile the product actually is. Like for example, like one end user, it, I don't know, one part of the world could be lightweighting with the help of Jerry, whilst another using the same product is just purely and exclusively using Fusion 360, the CNC tool parts. Now for 3D printing, Fusion 360 is seriously popular in that space due to its accessibility as a hobbyist modeler and just how good it is at giving people the 3D tools needed to model just about anything that they want. But Nikita's have both used filament fabrication techniques and metal additive manufacturing. More recently though, Autodesk have added their own integrated 3D printing slicer into Fusion 360 with a comprehensive-ish machine profile library, but uh, look, there's, there's definitely something appealing to keeping everything confined to one software application, but there's some work to be done if they're gonna try and pull people away from using the likes of Cura, which is tried, tested, and trusted, but there's, there's mileage to what they're trying to do there. But undoubtedly though, Fusion 360 is now firmly established deep within many CNC and CAM communities, with it being the toolpath generator of choice for both hobbyists and commercial manufacturers. Not only that though, but there's a huge online community uh, with tutorial content, guides, advice, and videos detailing how to get the best out of Fusion 360 with CAM and CNC. So regardless of whether you've got just like a, I know, a pretty simple desktop three-axis CNC router, or an absolutely ginormous five-axis booth, Fusion 360, along with its optional integrated scalable solutions, the likes of PowerMill, got the capability to design optimal cutting paths, simulate toolpath routes, design programming strategies to manufacture just about anything. And anecdotally, mate, in my opinion, it's gonna be interesting to see how or if Autodesk combine their relatively new 3D printing slicer with their already matured and popular subtractive cam solutions because again, again, in my opinion, hybrid manufacturing is something that looks pretty tasty and may just well be the future. And Fusion 360 is surely collecting up all the right ingredients for that mate. So along with being a 3D printing slicer, uh, a cam tool, AI designer with Jerry, a 3D modeler. Mate, Fusion 360's also got an entire web platform behind it, allowing you to access your data almost anywhere in the world on any device. 
And so once you've modeled up your design, you've saved it in your Fusion account in that, that data panel, well, your designs, they're not just accessible only within the Fusion 360 client, but then you can open up your Fusion account in a web browser and all of your stuff's viewable within the likes of Chrome or Edge. And not just that though, you can open up those files in Chrome or Edge and then you can create shareable hyperlinks that you can send to other people so that they can view your models and drawings as well. Useful if you want to share stuff with your friends or somebody somebody else, anyone. It's even got version history built into the platform alongside other basic cloud data management tools. So mate, that's just scratching the surface of what Fusion 360 has. Ultimately, Fusion 360, just me it means something different to different people. It ultimately depends on what you do with it and what industry that you're in, right? If you're just designing a desk in your office and Fusion 360's got you. If you want a model for designing parts, 3D printing, or if you're machining parts on the regular with any number of routers, Fusion 360 got you. But this is all small time stuff. What about real big business? Well, big question. <laughs> Covered most of it in this video up here, but desperately trying to keep this short. Let's just say that it's it's difficult for Fusion 360 to penetrate into big enterprise due to A, and big enterprise mostly already have established inherent CAD systems already that are difficult to shift and difficult to retrain on, and B, the whole cloud thing is still a thing in big business. That may have to change, may not. Maybe Fusion has to change, maybe not. It's still a thing though. But ultimately, one way or the other, if, look, the Fusion brand, it's now as well known as AutoCAD at this point. Certainly more recognizable than the likes of Inventor. And with the platform being so scalable, interchangeable, and easily unified with new technologies, hey, maybe it's time to stop fighting it. Just accept where ultimately where things just might be headed. So there you go. That's WTF. It's Fusion 360. Hopefully you learned something here. My name's Neil Cross. This has been Tech 3D. If you're looking for a license of Fusion 360, things in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Doodles.